Hi, this is Frid from The Joy of Syntax and English in Color with another video about German. Um, it's a mix of a pronunciation and grammar video. I was talking to my good friend and student, Victor, today. He is from Mexico and he's um, learning German. And he doesn't have much time to practice, which reminds me that I need to do another video about that. But I just wanted to share a few things that we did today because I think they will be useful for everybody. So I'll just show you the manuscript or the document we had today. Oops, let me get this out of the way so that you can see it. I hope it's big enough. Okay, he's a music teacher and I wanted to help him say uh, to his students, listen up or listen carefully because I want to explain something to you. Or please listen to this very carefully. Like when you play the guitar or something, you practice the guitar, you say, listen really carefully to this particular um, passage or run or whatever. And so you can say in German, hör mal bitte noch mal ganz genau hin. So listen in on something. Also hör noch mal, hör mal bitte noch mal ganz genau hin. So that's this sentence here. And this relatively simple sentence actually has a lot of, um, opens up a whole can of worms. Pronunciation worms and grammar worms. Let's start with the pronunciation worms. Um, hör is the imperative form of hören and means, it can mean um, hear and it can mean listen. So, um, hör mal hin is listen carefully. Hör mal also means listen, but usually hören means to hear. So, I hear a strange noise is, ich höre ein komisches Geräusch. Please listen to me is, hör mir mal gut zu. Um, please listen to this, or really listen, um, yeah, listen to this particular piece, uh, that's, hör mal hin. So, turn your ear and attention in the direction of something. So, zuhören is listen, to, hör mir zu is listen to me. Oder hör mal zu is listen to me and hör mal hin is pay attention to this thing that I'm pointing to. So, hör, uh, we see that, let me wear my glasses. <laughs> we see that there is an R, but I don't pronounce that R. It's in final position, so I replace it by a deep schwa. And my German is pretty much high German. So I don't say hör, hör. I, I can't even say it with an R. Hör, hör, no, I can't. I say hör. So what we have, I'll, let me scroll up. From the sound alphabet, we have the ö sound, tön, tön. If you don't know what the sound alphabet is and you want to know, I will put a link to my sound alphabet video in the description box below. Actually, it's a sound alphabet series where I introduce you to the soundscape of German. Anyway, so the word we practice the U umlaut with is tun sounds. U tun. So um, what you do is you say E and then you round your lips. E U U. Or you say O oh, and you leave everything in position and push the tongue forward. Oh, whatever. It's a different video to practice that, but if you already know how to do tune, tune, which is easier than hören, tune. Now remember the deep schwa word was super. Super. Die Suppe is super. Tune und super. Ö, a. Then you have the two sounds you need. Ö, a, ö, a. Now, in order to do the H nicely, I encourage you to do this. You breathe in and then you quietly breathe out with your mouth open. So no noisy out breath, but a quiet out breath with the mouth open. Sounds like this. That was a noisy in breath. <laughs> and 
and then you take you pull in your breath you take another in breath and then you breathe out saying hallo 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 and now hören 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 and now hör the imperative hör 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 mal bitte noch mal ganz genau hin hör mal bitte noch mal ganz genau hin so first you say it slowly hör mal bitte noch ganz noch mal sorry hör mal bitte noch mal ganz genau hin what i would like you to practice is when you speak slowly you still link the sounds together sounds crazy but it's a good thing to practice hör mal bitte noch mal ganz genau hin and then you slowly speed that up hör mal noch mal bitte hör mal bitte noch mal ganz genau hin Okay, so now we practiced um, pronunciation. I will do more later, but it's an imperative. Now, um, a sentence is either um, well is 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 a thought, as is, is a, a thought, a complete thought, and a sentence comes in four forms: the statement, the um, a question, the imperative, aka request, and the exclamation. Now the exclamation isn't so important, but it's still good to know. That's those are all the forms that a sentence can take. Um, of course, there are different types of sentences, but just the forms. So it's very important to to think of that, and it's very important to know the basic structure of a statement, a question, and a request command, slash command, and, well, and then to know, to rec be able to recognize an exclamation. So it's a really great exercise to try to turn this imperative or request into a statement. Now you see it's a request or imperative, so it doesn't have, um, a stated subject it has an implied subject and only context reveals who the implied or will reveal who the implied subject is imagine it's a group of people it's your class then it's several people and then if you want to turn this into a statement um, then you need to take the pronoun the second person plural pronoun in the subject case now you can also just imagine different scenarios and you can go sort of conjugate the sentence in the statement form i'll show you what i mean you go like this ich höre gut zu du hörst gut zu sie hört gut zu wir hören gut zu ihr hört gut zu sie hören gut zu so and now we have a grammar exercise which also involves pronunciation um höre is the standard form of first person singular present tense form um indicative form of to hear i listen is ich höre however so this r here is pronounced if you say the full word because you have a two syllabic word now and the R is considered the beginning of the second syllable. And then you have this soft R that I discuss in my R videos. Ich höre. Re. However, I don't usually say that. I usually drop the E and then the R becomes an R in final position and is not pronounced and it becomes höher. And then it looks like this, like the imperative actually. You only know it's not the imperative because it has the first person pronoun in front of it. Ich höre. Ich höre gut zu. Ich höre gut zu. Hör mal gut zu. Imperative. Ich höre gut zu. Statement with the first person singular pronoun as subject. Ich höre gut zu. Du hörst gut zu. I don't pronounce the R. Hörst gut zu. Du hörst gut zu. Sie hört gut zu. 
I don't pronounce this R. Sie hört gut zu. Sie hört gut zu. Now, I did this, I explained this in another video. I often don't release the T. The T is um, a plosive. So you stop the flow and you the airflow and then release it to say it T. But I often have an unreleased T. So I actually move from the T into the G. Sie hört gut zu. Hört gut. Hört gut. So I, I move from the hört gut. <laughs> Hört gut zu. So I combine the T and the G. I say the G, gut. But I'm, I don't release the T, but um, the closed phase of the T, so the, the plosive has three phases, the closing, the closed, and the opening phase. And the second phase, the closed phase, is the phase that coincides with the... So I, I melt the two together. The, this, um, the T doesn't have a opening phase and the G doesn't have um, a closing phase. So, gut, hört gut zu. Hört gut zu. Sie hört gut zu. So, there's no R when I speak and I melt these two together. Sie hört gut zu. Sie hört gut zu. Wir hören gut zu. You can say wir, wir hören gut zu. Then you hear that R, but you don't hear that one. Wir hören, but I don't say it. Wir hören gut zu. Ja, ja, wir hören gut zu. Und Sie hören gut zu. Sie hören gut zu. Okay, ich höre gut zu, du hörst gut zu, sie hört gut zu. Wir hören gut zu, ihr hört gut zu, sie hören gut zu. But, um, while I'm telling you, uh, or while I'm conjugating this verb for you, I want to say that verb endings and endings in general general are not as important as some grammar teachers might lead you to believe. It's way more important to know many words and to understand the syntax because if you put words in the right order then the case endings and the inflectional endings aren't important. You can be understood. Um, now what I always recommend is that you, you learn pronunciation and you, and you learn grammar and then you listen, 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 listen and you imitate and you imitate. And I promise you, if you listen and you read a lot and you copy what you hear and you imitate what you hear, you will learn the case endings by and by. The cognitive understanding of all of this can help you to then move into an intuitive understanding by and by. But um, a lot of, uh, many people have learned German without a cognitive understanding of grammar. But a cognitive understanding of grammar will not help you speak. And whatever you understand cognitively, you need to then bring into your subconscious. But I am digressing, but it's an important digression. Anyway, so now we turn all of this into a question. What do we have to do? For an inform, uh, you know, there are two types of questions: yes, no questions, and information questions. Um, they have basically the same syntax. The difference is that the information question has a question word in it. Now I turned these into yes, no questions. So all I had to do here was switch the subject and the verb around. So um, doesn't make much sense for the first person singular, but for the second person singular, it makes great sense. So, hörst du gut zu? Hörst du gut zu? Hörst du gut zu? Again, I don't pronounce the R, I think. Hörst du gut zu? Hört er gut zu? Hört sie gut zu? Hören wir gut zu? Doesn't make so much sense with the first person um, plural, but, you know, you can conceivably say that. But, hört ihr gut zu? That's important. And hören Sie gut zu. Okay, now an exclamation would be, wie schön du zuhören kannst. Wie schön du zuhören kannst. Okay, so we took an imperative sentence and we turned it into a statement and a question and uh, an exclamation. And we practice conjugation and we practice pronunciation. So we got a whole lot done. Now, 
I would like you to look at this. I will put this, I will add another sentence. Hör mir mal bitte gut zu, ich möchte dir was erklären. Again, I swallow the tea. Hör mir mal bitte gut zu, ich möchte dir was erklären. Now, in spoken language, we often use main clauses, but sometimes we might want to use an adverbial subclause of reason or reason, um, which starts with because in English and weil in German. And um, then an adverbial subclass is a subclass, and there is a huge difference between main clause, the main clause structure, and the subclass structure in German. In English, there isn't. So in German, we already talked about this, but we'll, um, the um, in in a in a normal main class like ich hör zu, the in a statement form of a main clause, the finite verb is always in position two, in second position. In a subclass, the finite verb always is in final position. So now we have here a sentence. The first sentence has the imperative form. Hör mir mal bitte gut zu. So in an imperative, of course, the verb is in first position. But then, ich möchte dir was erklären. Here we have a subject and then the finite verb and then the object, etc. Um, also, finite verb, sorry. <laughs> also, I'm mixing German and English. It's tough to stick with one language. Anyway, um, ich möchte dir was erklären. Oh, there's so much to talk about, but we stick to one thing. Now, if I want to add, turn this into a subclass, I will exchange the full stop to uh, with the comma, and then I add the conjunction. Then I grab the finite verb and put it in final position. Weil ich dir was erklären möchte. Hör mir mal bitte gut zu, weil ich dir was erklären möchte. Now, if you don't want to hassle with the, the subclass, but you still want to indicate, um, have a, a strong marker for the reason why you want the person to listen to you, then you can use the coordinating conjunction, den, and then you retain the main class structure. Denn ich möchte dir was erklären. For is the equivalent in English. For, of course, is a preposition, but it's also a coordinating conjunction. Different story. Okay, now if I want to turn the imperative into, um, if I want to not use an imperative, I could say, ich möchte, dass du mir jetzt gut zuhörst, weil ich dir was Wichtiges erklären will. So here we have a complex sentence and it contains, look at this, it has two main clauses. And the first main clause contains a subclass as class element, as object. I want something. What do I want? I want you to listen to me. I, um, you can't do this in English. With mögen is I want, and with want, you can't have a, that clause as object. Um, you need to do something else. I want you to listen to me. Um, ich möchte, dass du mir jetzt zuhörst. But in German, you can have a das clause as object. But you need a comma because there's the comma rule that you separate main and subclasses. Okay, so we have a main class containing a, sub, sub, <clears throat> a nominal clause as object. And then we have an adverbial subclass of reason introduced by weil. Ich möchte, dass du mir jetzt gut zuhörst, weil ich dir was Wichtiges erklären will. Okay, that was a lot of stuff in, um, in the short time. If it confused you, don't worry about it. Um, take baby steps. Go back to what you didn't understand. If you have any particular questions, pop them into the, um, into the comment section. And if I think it's interesting for many people, then I will make you an answer video. Okay, have a lovely day and I will see you in my next video. And oh yes, I would love some thumbs up. And if you wanna share the video, I would be very happy if you did. Okay, take good care and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.